Hey guys, Loco here with the cockiest mid laner from North America. How are you doing, Jensen? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, actually, I'm doing pretty fucking terrible because we just lost to CLD. So, yeah. How did you guys lose? I mean, it's TL versus CLG. Like, TL is a North American MSI finalist. And honestly, I don't think you guys looked that bad in week one. So, I was expecting you guys to be kind of strong in week two also. Um, yeah, I mean, we're just trying out different team comps. We played a team comp that kind of relied on snowballing. And we were off to a pretty good start, but then we just threw the game and like we gave up dragon and then we died at dragon. We invaded their blue and died when we have, we should have the strongest 2v2 um, in the game, like with Silas and Olaf, like there's no way we should be able to lose 2v2 contest. And then we just made a lot of mistakes. And I think giving up the early ocean dragon was pretty big too. So just a lot of bad plays from our side rather than like, I, I wouldn't even say they played good. I think it was just a lot of bad plays from us and like like I said, we played a comp that had to snowball, and then we just fucked it up. You guys gave up Aatrox, and I was pretty shocked because I would say most pro teams and pro players think Aatrox is one of the strongest OPs where if you get into a team fight with Aatrox, it's nearly impossible to win. Yeah, um, I mean, we thought the cannon into Aatrox is a fine pick. Like, we know Aatrox is stronger, but then we also thought, since it's a trade for Silas, we think Silas is, like, pretty comparable to Aatrox, so it wasn't really, like... A big issue to us um so we thought like we trade top priority for mid priority so we thought it would be okay but since we threw the game a lot then atrox is really strong when he's on the winning side because he can just go in and get resets and then he's like pretty impossible to beat but um uh, yeah um we don't really think like atrox i mean he's obviously op but we think it's okay to give it if we can get something in return so tl right now is two and two is this the msi hungover that everyone's been talking about um, I don't know if it's really like MSI hungover. I think we're just like every game we've gotten leads. So it's really just us throwing all the games, I think, because I mean, I think in the past season or last split, we struggled a lot with early games. But this split, we actually off to really good early games. But then we're just always throwing the games. And yeah, I mean, I would say there's like a bit of an MSI hungover. Like, um, I don't know. I don't really feel the like same drive as I did like last split. But I mean, I don't think I'm like playing super bad i'm definitely making mistakes but i don't know i won't really like fully blame it on an msi hungover i think we just need to stop making all these mistakes and and froze so what was your biggest takeaway from msi um i think it was just um the early game we played like a really really big part in msi like every every team would just snowball the early game and win off early game so we realized we have to like be better at playing early game and better at playing around mid because mid jungle was the most important at msi and it was actually something we didn't really play at all um, last split in NA because we could basically get away with just leaving me 1v2 mid because other teams didn't really know how to snowball. Like even TSM, who was a mid-centric team, um, they could never really snowball mid properly, even though all they did was camp mid. So it was never really a problem for us to just, you know, not play around mid. But then at MSI, like it showed against the best teams in the world that if we ignore mid, like we're just going to get snowballed on and punished and they will just roam on a side lane. So I think that was something we improved a lot now. Um, we're better at playing around mid lane. Um, but we're just making too many throws right now. So it's not really showing. But um, yeah, I think that was the biggest takeaway for me. You talk about all these basic mistakes. And also, when I interviewed Sven Skarin earlier yesterday, he told me Jensen plays so well internationally. I kind of get the feeling you don't do as well in NA versus when you go to international. Is it a motivation thing? Why is it? I honestly don't think it's a motivation thing. I think it's just whenever I play internationally, I think I'm really, really good at learning and learning fast. But here in NA, there's not really like much competition like I don't really learn much from playing against these mid laners like like you know like playing against Bjergsen like you can learn stuff and he's really smart at the game but I don't really get like super challenged like on a mechanical or individual level it's more like oh their jungler is really good at playing around mid so I have to respect that a lot but then when I play against like you know Caps, Rookie or Faker like they're really really good at playing the matchups 1v1 and like snowballing with their jungler like really really fast so there's I have to learn really fast and like just play the same style and then once I get back to NA like I wouldn't say like I forget it it's just the level is so much lower that I don't know I feel like it kind of makes me worse at the same time too so playing internationally is like completely different than playing in NA. Also when I interviewed Bjergsen he said you guys actually talked during MSI and talked about matchups has that relationship gotten better because I know you guys used to be really big rivals in the past. Yeah um, 
I've been talking to Bjergsen a lot more, like about matchups and stuff, and like what he thinks about certain champions, and he's been really helpful with it uh, during MSI when there was something I had questions with. So uh, big thanks to him, and yeah, I think relationship is is pretty good now. Um, I mean, people were saying that like we had a bad relationship because like oh, like I hated Bjergsen or whatever, but I don't know. It was never really like that. Like to me, it was just. I felt like I was like we would always talk about like matchups and stuff like many years ago and I felt like I was always helping him more than you know maybe he was helping me so I thought you know maybe it's better for me to just not talk to him too much about stuff because he was always he was always winning NA and I was always the one losing so I felt like you know maybe I'm just giving too much information and I should just keep to myself more and see if it changes anything so I mean it was never really like any grudge or anything it was just I felt like it didn't help my case you know so I kind of like stopped talking to him as much when it came to the game, um, but um, I don't know. I really just want to help him and, you know, help us push each other so that we can be better internationally. Sounds like you have a lot of respect for Bjergsen and vice versa. Is there anyone else in NA you respect that much in terms of mid laners? Um, I actually think Niski is playing pretty well, um, but the thing about Bjergsen is he's really, really good at playing together with his team, um, so that's... That's like the one thing I think he has over me. Like it's always so hard to play against TSM because the way he plays with their jungler, like they don't ever like miss opportunities to pressure you. So, and he's also really good at like wave management and stuff. Whereas like I think Niski is just he's pretty good mechanically. Like they're pretty comparable, like on an individual level when it comes to that. But um, yeah, playing against Bjergsen is always really hard. Okay, final question: Have you and Zaven talked after the finals? <laughs> no not really i mean i don't really have anything against him but we didn't really talk before either so i don't know i don't have anything against him though but uh i don't know <laughs> all right jensen thank you so much for the interview and i hope you guys do better next week thank you. All right. hey guys thank you for watching the interview hopefully you enjoyed it also if you're not subscribed to me there should be a button somewhere where you can click and you can subscribe to me and also, if you want to check out more content, there should be a video somewhere up here that you can click. And lastly, thank you to Low Key Community for making all this possible.